they they make me feel a type of way okay that's all I'm, that's all i'm saying okay i'm not saying what type of way i'm just saying a type of way oh my god easily okay i feel like who's your favorite scooby-doo character and why Who's noah favorite? wakes up in captivity chained to the ground steve explains that he's a butcher of human meat <laughs> is this the same movie that is the movie. okay that's phenomenal the synopsis that i would give I hello welcome everybody to casual conversations with my guest nicole better known as velma's orange sweater they are a variety streamer known to play games like Toontown Wizard 101, Frog Detective, and Lethal Company, just to name a few. Truly a variety streamer. Um, my, my first, like, kind of gentle question to you here, okay? So I was trying to do research on your account, and it's surprisingly hard to find information about you. Um, I saw that on your YouTube VODs YouTube channel, right? You have your earliest VOD set to July 4th, 2023, but I feel like that's not how early you started streaming. So out that of curiosity, is. Is, is it really? That was your first time streaming. Yes. That yeah, is that so was my cool. very first time. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what got you into streaming to begin with? What made you decide to go ahead and do that? Um, honestly, the biggest thing was that I finally got a good PC set up. <laughs> like it took me all like it took me like I started getting some PC stuff in like April of last year and I kind of pieced it together. My friends gave me a couple parts. I found some parts on Facebook Marketplace. And then I've always like kind of watched Twitch streamers like for a couple years and then I kind of got out of it. And then once I got my PC, I was like, you know what, this would be kind of fun. And then um, before I fully started, I um, watched a few Toontown streamers and I was like, okay, I think I need to stream Toontown. This looks really fun. <laughs> you don't mind me asking what Toontown streamers kind of inspired you to get into that? Um, I would say, I think like the first three that I watched were Ellie Cat. Danny and Rosie, for yep. sure. That's a great trio. <laughs> Those are fantastic picks. Yes. They're, they're still, to this day, very prominent Toontown figures. Definitely. <laughs> so when did you start first start playing Toontown? Were you back in the TTO days? Did you start playing in TTR? Like, when did you actually get started doing that? Yeah, I literally played TTO when I was, like, nine years old. Like, the, <laughs> I learned how to type because of Toontown. <laughs> so, like, I have played Toontown for a very long time, and I just, I love it so much. And I, I remember the day that it shut down, too. <laughs> like, I literally cried at my dad's computer. Like, I always played it, and I just, like, sobbed on the last day. But then, like, one of my friends was like, hey, there's Toontown rewritten coming out, like, after, when, when it, like, first got um like kind of came about so um i started playing that when it came out and then i've just like i've always been connected to toontown like ever since i was a kid <laughs> i'm so jealous of people's experiences getting to actually play it back then i always did like the free trials like where you sign up mm -hmm. for like a week or whatever or like sometimes they had like free weekends or whatever i never got to do like the full thing how far did you get in tto um if i remember correctly because i had two tunes i think the highest, like the furthest I got was like, my tune was like 121 laugh, I think. <sighs> <laughs> I got pretty far. I mean, that's like during the times when they actively tried to sandbag people because the monthly subscription dues, like they, they wanted to keep you going for as long as possible. That's a really impressive number to get to. <laughs> but I never did anything boss boss. Bot, though i do remember that i remember i was like a level 50 robber baron level 50 mr hollywood and then i was like a flunky because i just like i knew about the stock options and i was like i don't want to deal with that it's fair enough <laughs> what is your favorite memory from playing toontown it could be at any point in your life whether you were a kid when you came back to ttr whatever it might be but identifying like one or two maybe like ideal favorite memories Ooh, thinking about um, I think one of my favorite memories is when I first started playing Corporate Clash. So, like, I actually, like, I first played Corporate Clash, I think, like, two years ago. But then I stopped. Like, I only played it for a couple months, and then I stopped. And then I got back into it when I started streaming. But um, I made a tune with one of my close friends that I actually met on TTO when I was nine years old. <laughs> so, like, we've stayed in touch ever since. And, um he's one of my mods now but when we first started playing corporate clash i remember we made little matching tunes they were little beavers becky and bucky and that was just really fun like because it was fun getting to experience the new game but it, like i'm glad that i restarted and made a new tune because all the like different like kudos managers and stuff like that those were not a thing when i first played corporate clash so like i'm glad that i restarted to get the new experience but i think that was very fun like playing it for the first time with my friend that i've had since the TTO days. <laughs> so I think that might be one of my favorite experiences. That's like the definition of reliving childhood like dreams. I'm, I'm so happy yes. you got to have that experience. <laughs> 
Okay, this is going to require a thinking cap here, okay? Ooh, okay. You, you know Toontown. You've played Toontown for a long time. There's a lot of things you've seen, a lot of things you wish would be happening. What is one feature you wish that was added Ooh. to Toontown? It could be any of the versions, anything that you wish could mm-hmm. be added. Ooh. I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely excited... I do wish that there was like a new playground, but I'm, I know that TTR is like working towards that. So I'm excited to see how that will turn out because, um, I, everybody always talks about that little cloud that's above Goofy Speedway. (laughs) So I think I've always thought that that would be nice to have a new playground. And so like, I'm glad that TTR is working towards that. I think it'll be really good. I'm excited to see that. So between all three of like the main versions of Toontown, Mm -hmm. what is your favorite gag track? And why? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta think about this one because mm-hmm. I don't know. I've really grown to love trap. Cause like my first tune that I ever made was trapless. And then like when I made my second tune, I made her dropless. And I just I don't know. I love trap because it just has really fun gags. Cause like the TNT like and, and the animations too because like even in Clash the animations are so funny because like with like the wrecking ball and it knocks their shoes off yes. like <laughs> that is so good so honestly I think trap might be my favorite <laughs> I'm a big fan of the trap door they kind of like look around look at you and then fall I think I think that I agree that as far as like being a toony gag it's really funny yes definitely <laughs> so you kind of mentioned both games I'm kind of curious between TTR and TTCC if you had to pick only one of them to be able to oh, play for no. the rest of your Toontown career. <laughs> Which one would you pick and why? Oh, gosh. That's hard because I love TTR because it's very nostalgic. And, like, it's, like, they're adding some new content but still, like, keeping it that kind of nostalgic, original feeling of Toontown. But then I also love Corporate Clash because it's kind of more challenging. And there's, like, a bunch of different, like, bosses and the new gags. So, like... I love both of them for different reasons, but I think if I had to pick one, I maybe would say Corporate Clash just because there's a lot of content that I still haven't even gotten to yet. And like, there, I still have so much to go in there. So like, I think that'd be good. <laughs> How far along are you in Corporate Clash out of curiosity? Um, I'm at like 120 something laugh <sighs> and <God>. I, <laughs> but I still have so much. Like I haven't maxed any of my suits. I uh, still have to unlock Pace Setter. Um, I haven't done, I haven't gotten to like Oklo or anything like that. So like I still, and I also like have hardly done any of like the activities. I maxed fishing though. Ooh, that reminds me if I, if they could add more things, add more fish. I love fishing. More fish. So I'm sorry. How many more fish would you like added to the game? Oh my God. Maybe like, I know there's like, isn't there like 70? You know, you're asking the wrong guy. I fish out of necessity, (laughs) not due to pleasure. Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. Any game I love fishing. So like if they could have like a hundred fish total, that'd be amazing. 70 is a weird number to end on. Like, just go to 100 at that point. Do you have any recommendations for any kind of, like, toony type of fish that you'd want to see added? You, you, can, you look at all, like, the peanut butter and jelly variants of the fish, for example. Like, just, like, funny, whatever nonsense fish. What would you want to see? <laughs> I don't know. I, I ha- Like, anything punny. Because, like, I just love, like, the holy mackerel because he's got little holes in him. Like, I don't know. Like, anything that would be, like, a pun... I can't think of any off the top of my head right now, but just any sort of like dad joke type puns would be amazing. Just more of those. <laughs> I have a controversial take. A lot of people have disagreed with me on this. I actually want your opinion. Have you ever played Stardew Valley before? <gasps> yes, I love Stardew Valley. My favorite, unironically, favorite thing to do in Stardew Valley is actually fishing. And I think that the mechanics are really engaging, really challenging, but not so challenging that they're insurmountable. You know, you get more levels, you get the bar to be bigger, you can get better rods that gives you better attachments, etc. All of the people I've talked to about this have told me the opposite, that they hate the feature. How do you feel about Stardew Valley fishing? I love Stardew Valley fishing. It's literally, like, my favorite part. And, like, I started playing Cult of the Lamb recently, and it has, like, very similar fishing mechanics. And I was so happy because, like, Stardew Valley fishing is, like, the best best fishing out of any game I've ever played. I have to, like, hold my breath during it because some, some of those fish, like, when you get to, like, the legendary fish and then the baby legendary fish or whatever, mm-hmm. it gets really, really tough. And their patterns, <laughs> you have to actually memorize the patterns. Like, there's actually some skill attached to that. It's really yes. cool. <laughs> okay, this is a streaming-related question for you. Mm-hmm. If you could make enough money to live streaming full-time, like not necessarily like millions of dollars, but like enough to like pay your bills and be comfortable. 
Mm-hmm. Would you do that even if it meant working more than 40 hours a week? Would you be interested in making that a career if the opportunity presented itself to you? I think it would be really fun because, like, especially um, if you get, like, that far along in streaming, you can just make so much different type of content. Like, you can play games. You can do, like, IRL streams. Like, I feel like it would be really fun to do something like that. So, um, but I, for now, part-time is very fun, too. So, <laughs> absolutely, I think it would be really cool. Okay. So far, that you're two, we are two for two for that answer. I feel like a lot of people would not mind making streaming, like, their full-time gig. Yeah. Um, of all the Toontown streamers you're currently aware of, there are a, quite a few of them. You and I both have a lot of mutual ones in common. Mm-hmm. Whose content do you feel is the most engaging to their community? The Ooh. the people who have the most engagement from the people who were following them. Mm-hmm. I would say, I mean, it might be a little biased because I do watch her a lot. But, but def- I, I love watching Ellie Cat. Oh, my God. I love watching her streams because she has, like, really funny rewards and um she always does like really cool like events in her discord server like i aspire to have a discord server like hers <laughs> she's always doing like movie nights and like cartoons and stuff it's so much fun they so have I feel cartoon like... saturday mornings it's ridiculous yes, it's so it's cool so good. <laughs> it's amazing i love that that's a good answer i um one of my <laughs> dreams is eventually have ellie on the show i've actually she helped me test it she helped me test the like the the, the recording of it she t- taught me about like virtual cameras she taught me how to like get obs to like be perfect love ellie to death she's so great yes i love her <laughs> now it's more of a negative question mm-hmm. toontown what is your least favorite thing about toontown out of like any version ever any version ever and i put examples as like the balancing of the gags grinding if there's any toxicity you've noticed whatever like mm-hmm. as far as like the games go as a whole what's, what's been your least favorite experience about it hmm. yeah sometimes the grind can be a little especially like suit not so much gag grinding because you can get like bonus xp from like buildings and stuff but like just like the suit grinding for cer- like especially for like Wobot and Bossbot can be pretty bad and I know that TTR is kind of working to mitigate that now with the new like under new management update which is really good and also hot take well I feel like a lot of people like it and a lot of people don't I don't love racing oh, no, I hate <laughs> racing so much I'm so bad at it I always get last place yeah. I've like I've started to like it a little more now but when I first oh gardening also i'm not gonna lie i'm terrible at garden i i literally always forget to water my plants it takes so long so (laughs) i feel like actually scratch racing i've i've started to like racing some more but gardening never liked it (laughs) i feel like with enough exposure therapy you could probably get to like racing as being anybody right because like the the hardest part about is how janky it is and how much you have to adjust (laughs) how you expect a thing to move because like once True. you get that down, it's fine. But like you said, like guarding requires so much active attention and effort. I can understand mm-hmm. why that would be something that you wouldn't necessarily want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Favorite thing to do in Toontown and why? What do you look most forward to doing? Hmm. I think... My, my brain immediately went to Corporate Clash for this answer because I love all the different, like, street managers and the kudos managers because those are just so fun. And, like, get the chance of, like, getting a drop and, like, getting a super unique item makes it very exciting and it, like, kind of pushes you to do it more. So, honestly, I think that might be my favorite thing is trying to get the drops from all the fun little managers and bosses and things <laughs> you know i've never been the kind of guy that tries to grind for drops but whenever i saw the backpack you get from the duck shuffler i actually unironically grinded yes. it so much because it's such a cool backpack the money bag mm-hmm. on the on the back is just so lovely i love that it's so cute it took me forever to get it it took me like i think like 30 duck shufflers or something i got so lucky it was like 17 for me to get both Ooh. i got the sticker like three or four times in but i didn't understand how drops worked at the time i was i was so thankful for that because it's the only sticker that i have <laughs> <laughs> okay get off toontown for a second scooby-doo your yes. your username is velma's orange sweater but i still have to ask mm-hmm. who's your favorite scooby-doo character and why <laughs> it's obviously Velma. It has to be. I had to ask. <laughs> I love sure. Velma because I just love how she's like. I don't know. She. I feel like she's like the epitome of like. So like for me, I'm very much like a sciencey gal. I I enjoy science, and so she's even though like this show is like super super like sciencey. It's more like supernatural mysteries and stuff. 
I just feel like she's kind of like, I feel like she's a woman in STEM. And I just, I just love that about her. And like, um, I just love how she's very curious and very smart. And I just, I don't know. She's a queen and I love her. I mean, <laughs> and I've just always been told I look her. like her. Yeah. I've always been told I look like her because my hair, like, because I have bangs and glasses. So everybody's like, oh my God, Velma. So I was like, okay. So I just, I've always loved Velma though. Like even as a kid when I used to watch the old Scooby-Doo shows. <laughs> Well, that brings me to another Scooby Doo question. Okay, mm-hmm. I I grew up on Scooby Doo. Okay, we we're, 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 we're a very similar age. Okay, so we, we both <laughs> had a similar childhood in this. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite Scooby Doo movie? Oh my god, easily. Okay, I feel like. Okay, which one is the one? Oh god, you're gonna make me have to Google something, <laughs> aren't you? Go no, on. we might have to Google because <laughs> I'm so bad with names. Okay, hang on, let me pull up my Chrome. <laughs> um, it's okay. Hang on. It's the it's the live action ones with like Matthew Lillard. Sure. Um, which one is the one where like Matthew Lillard turns into a woman? <laughs> Wasn't that the first? Is that the one? is that the second one? I, I don't remember. Oh, I gosh. genuinely can't remember. <laughs> it's definitely oh, like gosh. one of the. Li- it's definitely one of the live action ones. The like I. Hang on. I'll find this. This is really important. Was, this has become the entire thing right here. No, literally. Oh, God. Shot I think it is. Is it from the first one? I, I thought so, but, dude, it's been so long. I, I, I have, I'm, not, I'm not a hardcore fan of Scooby-Doo. I'll be honest with you here. I, I, I didn't expect to get reverse trivia Oh, no. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> count this as my plan. It actually is the first one. Okay. I think it's the first one, yeah. The oh, first, I see. Oh, I, my I forget. God, they kind of they run together for me, so I forget which one, what happens in which one. Can I just but say I that? I definitely think that they they make me feel a type of way. Okay, that's all. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Okay, I'm not saying what type of way. I'm just saying a type of way. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's image. real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'd say the first like Scooby Doo live action with Matthew Lillard. I love that man. <laughs> I'm gonna go completely off the rails here. It has nothing to do with mm-hmm. anything we've talked about okay. among us. I've noticed yes. that in your about section, you kind of listed a lot of the games you played. I want you to take a look back. What is your greatest moment, either achievement, solve, whatever, <laughs> in Among Us? Do you have Do you have any highlight moments you can share with us? Yes, actually, this this happened on stream one time. So I'm very bad at um, being the imposter because, because I just I'm so bad at like lying because once somebody is like, oh yeah, it's her, I'm like. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> and like, I get all nervous and I can't lie anymore. <laughs> so I'm really bad at lying. So like in general, I hate being the imposter because I'm just so bad at it. Because as soon as I'm caught, I'm done for. But there was one game that I played. Um, I think it was like, I forget if it was like a two imposter game. Or I don't know. I think it was like a two imposter. And um, it was, uh, I forget what map it was too. Because it was a weird map that I've like never played before. And um. The first imposter that was with me, he got found. He he got found out pretty quick, and I was like, "Oh God!" There was still like so many people left, and I was so nervous. But like slowly but surely, I started killing them off and like sabotaging. And I actually like came out at the end. Like it was three of us left, like me and then two other people. And um, I convinced the one of the people to vote for the other person, and I was like, "Yes!" And so I got the I got the win on that one, which was I was so proud of myself because awesome. <laughs> I'm really bad at lying. <laughs> you you overcame adversity in this case, and you and you truly <laughs> exactly. hard carried your team. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I saw that in your about page that you're cur- that you're in grad school. Are you still currently in grad school? I am. Yes, I have um, one more year left. Like it's like a two. Technically, it's more than a two-year program, but if you do a thesis, it's more than a two-year, and I don't want to do a thesis, so I'm going to get it done in two years, hopefully. <laughs> Can I ask, what's the difference between doing a thesis versus not doing a thesis? Like, what do you, what's the benefit? I mean, I guess um, the benefit for the thesis is kind of more like if you want to pursue maybe like a PhD or if you want to have like more like publications and stuff like that, but that's not something that I'm like wanting to go towards. Like, I don't want a PhD. Like, I... I'm kind of more doing the master's program just to kind of give me an extra boost and gain more experience um, before I go into like my career that I want to go into. So um, yeah, it's kind of more so like if you want to do a thesis, either like additional like research experience to get like stuff published or just if you want to pursue a PhD, it's like highly recommended. Is a master's necessary for your like career path to have before you can kind of enter the workforce? 
Um, some places require it. Some places don't. It's not like entirely required, but it does um, kind of give you a step ahead. Because especially because so what I'm kind of wanting to go into, I want to go into like DNA analysis. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so I'm like in like for anything really like forensic science is what I'm really into. So like. Um, there are some places that are like, oh, you have to have a bachelor's degree or like plus like two years of like this experience. But um, and or they're like, or you can just have a master's and then like and then that's all you need. So it kind of like it's not like required required, but it does kind of give you the step ahead to get in. Are you doing student loans, scholarships, pay as you go? Like what's like your approach towards that? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, you're fine. Um, so I'm doing, so right now I don't have any loans just because my undergrad ended up not being relatively expensive. I know I'm so grateful for that. I really am because, um, my dad helps me pay for school. Um, but next, so like in the s next school year, um, here at the end of this year, we can apply for assistantships. And if we get an assistantship, it pays for half of our tuition oh for the following year. So that's what I'm holding out for is, is the assistantship. <laughs> that's an amazing opportunity to get out of college, either completely debt free or like relatively debt free. Because I have yes. friends that did like a four to six year experience and they have so much money they owe and it is just like crippling. I'm, I'm yes. really impressed by that. I'm very, very grateful to not have to have any loans currently. I mean, I might have to get a loan for a car soon because my car kind of died. That's a whole other story. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But school-wise, because I, I had scholarships through my undergrad that helped, like, a majority of it. So then it kind of, like, gave me a boost. Like, I didn't have to worry so much for, like, the master's program. But I definitely am glad to get the assistantship for – um, hopefully for next year because undergrad was um, technically more expensive like the undergrad tuition at my school is like forty thousand dollars like it's oh. ridiculous <laughs> it literally like makes me gag every time <laughs> like I'm just like Ugh. like so thankfully like they give out way more scholarships though okay because like um, the grad program is like seven thousand dollars but you don't get any scholarships so it's kind of like a trade-off is like the undergrad was way more expensive but you got like way more scholarships and then this you get like no scholarships at all but the assistantship will help a lot for sure i mean cuts it down to 3500 that's significantly better yeah yes. god dude that makes me die a little bit on the inside <laughs> I was lucky I enough. I got to live with my family until I graduated, so I, I didn't have, like, real expenses. So I was able to get through just mm -hmm. by paying my own way. But, like... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing is because, like, I live at home, so, like, I don't have to, like, worry about paying for, like, an apartment and stuff because, like, living on campus or, like, living near campus is so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and people will take out loans to do it and then just yeah. keeps adding on to it. It just terrifies me. It's very scary. <laughs> when you aren't streaming... What do you fill your time with? I mean, obviously, we now know school is a, a portion of that, but I, I, I'm sure that's not everything that you do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of school, um, a lot of work. I work um, at the Boys and Girls Club part time, and it's like my fa it's so fun. I've worked there for like over five years now. Oh my gosh! I started <laughs> I started there my like senior year of high school, so it's been so much fun. So that's like another big chunk of my time, and then um, I'd say like the like 10% that I have left of my, of my time. So like streaming, work, school. And then I also, um, I like, um, I really love, I love watching movies and shows. Like I love watching, I like to watch stuff like on the weekends and then I like to go thrifting a lot. So like movies and thrifting are like my two favorite, like go to, what am I gonna do for fun? Besides gaming, of course. <laughs> do you see movies in theaters by chance? Yes. What? I haven't, like, in a while. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, what was the last movie you saw in theaters? Ooh, actually, I, like, I used to go, when I like, a couple years ago. Like, before COVID hit, I would say, I literally went to the movies, like, every month. And then, like, after COVID, like, I started going again. But then now I'm, like, so busy with school that I hardly ever go anymore. But I did get – my friend and I got free tickets um, a couple weeks ago to go see Pearl. It was, like um, – 
a re-release of it for like Valentine's Day. So, <laughs> so like it was like A24 was doing like a movie series where it's like, oh, like each Wednesday of February, we're going to show a movie at AMC. So then um, I got we like won like free tickets for it. So awesome. we're like, let's go. <laughs> it breaks my heart to hear they don't go to theaters anymore. I'm actually a GM of a movie theater. So like all, all I want to hear is that people are going. I hope that you go back someday because yes. I, I yes. love it so much. It's so magical. <laughs> I love going to the movie theater. Oh my gosh, I have you? I love going to AMC because of the Nicole Kidman preview right before, where she's like, where she's like, um, you're you're, cha- you're you're not just changed, but somehow reborn, and like it's so dramatic, and I love it so much. It's so extra for no reason. It doesn't have any business. <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> um, do you have? So going off, getting away from the Scooby Doo thing, like, do you have like a movie that you've gone back to, like? infinite number of times like one that you could just probably quote from memory kind of thing yes i would say i mean i have i love movies like i truly do watch movies like i have to watch at least like two movies a week to survive the week i love that so like i would say like some of my favorites okay i'll give you like a top five okay i I love that that's great let's go (laughs) Um, definitely Tangled. Yes, that my is like favorites. I love Tangled. Yes, <laughs> Tangled's like my favorite Disney movie ever. Like it's so good. So definitely Tangled. Um, Twilight. <laughs> the I movies love, you like the movies, not the I books. Love Twilight. The, the movies. They're trash. Yes. <laughs> they're so bad that they're good. Like oh no, the acting it makes me hurt. Like it, it makes no, it painful. <laughs> It's so painful, but I just like it's like a comfort movie. <laughs> uh, I watch them all the time, and <laughs> so like Twilight is just like in general like the series. Oh, Hunger Games. Okay, I love respectable Hunger games. My favorite is Catching Fire out of all of them, and I love the books too. So I haven't read the Twilight book series. My mom has read them like five times, and I need to read them. But the I never books are better than yet. the movie, but the the yes. books are also trash. <laughs> yeah, I res- I believe that for sure. <laughs> So let's see. So Tangled, Twilight, Hunger Games, La La Land. Yes. I you have love good taste. La La Land. Yes. <laughs> La La Land is one of my favorite movies ever. It makes me cry every time, but it's so good. And then um trying to think of like a fifth one. I'm trying to think of what I have on my letterbox as like <laughs> I love letterbox. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Um, I would say a fifth movie would probably be Okay, this is going to sound so weird, but there's this movie that I really love. It's called Fresh, and it's very, it's a very kind of messed up movie, but it's on Hulu, and it's so good. I-, I watch it, like, all the time. It's, like, this girl, like, no spoilers, but this girl um, meets this guy. So she's, like, it's it's kind of, like, a good commentary on, okay, like, Okay, I'm reading the plot, culture. and I have some questions for you. <laughs> They wake up in a captivity chained to the ground. Wait, this is not it. Fresh 2022 Wait, film on Hulu. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Noah okay, wakes okay. up in captivity chained to the ground. Steve explains that he's a butcher of human meat. <laughs> is this the same movie? That is the movie. Okay, That's phenomenal. Not the synopsis that I would give. I'm just saying this is what this is what the plot is saying to me here that I'm reading. Really? So very because you have like a wholesome tangled, a kind of like you know like a cheesy Twilight. <laughs> You know, and then, and then you have Hunger Games, which is like dystopian, cool. But then you have like she wakes up chained to the ground. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it's so good. It's kind of like I feel like it's a good. It's like the horrors of modern dating is like the best way to put this movie. <sighs> okay. <laughs> it's so good, and like it's very much like a girl boss movie because no spoilers, but like she has her girl boss moment, and it's just <laughs> you cheer for her, like. Genuinely, it's very good. I have a question about Twilight for you. <gasps> yes. And this, this is, we're going to take ourselves back to like the 2010s. Are you <laughs> Team Edward or Team Jacob? And your decision will oh actually impact gosh. our friendship. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like it's so hard because. Oh, no, it's how could it be hard? It's so simple. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, I was always Team Jacob. <laughs> but I do know that like Edward is better for Bella. Like their relationship is like better and also jacob literally like imprints on a baby which is <laughs> so weird it's like i always liked when i was younger i was team jacob because i thought he was hot but then, i mean taylor Walker is hot yeah he's very gorgeous yes. so like but like as i've gotten older and wiser 
I would say I'm team Edward now, but when I was younger, I was team Jacob. <laughs> Jacob was supremely manipulative, especially in the books. And oh, like, yeah. I just, I I just hate like everything that would about him. I my opinion, too. He's entitled. I never read the books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you're not entitled to people's... I don't know. Hmm. It, sorry. I, I get real heated if people actually say Jacob unironically. But you, sh- you should absolutely try to take try to read the books. It, it's, they're a little bit I long, like but they're, it's it's worth it if you actually care about the movies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you know what? That is it for my prepared questions. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about? Anything at all? I'm open to any no, subjects. I think I think that's good for now. I feel like I always go... I go off track very easily, so it's good to stay on. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. Would you please shout out whatever you want to shout out? I'll be putting any links down in the description, of course. But if you wanted to mention anything here, you know, YouTube channel, Twitch, TikTok, etc. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, just check me out on Twitch, Velma's Orange Sweater. I stream lots of variety, especially Toontown, of course. So I'd love to have more people join the mystery gang. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to go ahead and outro it out. I hope that everybody here enjoyed watching today. Me with Nicole. If you enjoyed, go ahead and give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and do not forget to keep it casual.